Hello class, today what we're going to be doing is the Mad Libs line by line code walkthrough. First thing is the import statement. This makes it the applet works. This makes it so that the random works. And this makes it so that everything else works. We have to put extends applet to make it so an applet works. And this should be your last name. The init is going to be shown during the idle game, not this one, because we're not putting any code there anyway, so I don't want to talk about that. And this sets up the paint. We already talked about the blue stuff all before in the movie, so we're going to look at code by code. First line of code, what we're doing here is we're setting up a primitive variable type of an int, naming that variable Yasuo. We're typecasting the random value, which outputs from 0 to 0.999 times 200, which makes it 0 to 199.999. So we truncate it down to 0 to 199, then we add 1 to get 1 to 200. We then create another primitive variable type of type boolean and we name it I is good English and we call get random boolean. This get random boolean is a function, not a method, a function because there's no object that it's operating on. It is just a straight up get random boolean. It returns 50% true or false. I also showed you below how to set up different functions for different percentages. So this is get 50% and this is get 80%. So what I did was I created numbers from 1 to 100, and I said if it's less than or equal to 50, this would return true 50% of the time. This would return true 80% of the time. So if you wanted any percent, you literally could just make a function and get x percent where this is x. So I'm going to say int x equals 90. If you really want to be cool, you could have a parameter and say int percent. And instead of x, I'm going to say percent. And what this does is it gives you a percentage from 0 to 100. x, so x equals percent. Now please look what I'm doing right here. This is new stuff, by the way, so please pay attention to this. I'm creating a public function that returns a true-false value for get x percent. So it passes in a parameter that's a percent. And I take that percent value and assign it to value x. And then I say return the random percentage if x percent of the time is true. So the one thing I do have to check to see is I say if x is less than or equal to 100, then I return this. Otherwise, else, else I'm just going to return true. Because if it's greater than 100%, well, obviously it just happens. So we're going to go back to our code. So then what we're going to do is we're going to set up three objects of, t of object type string, labeling the variable names as such. These variable names point to the memory location that contains the strings in green. I set up teacher to be broken too because this is my first error code because they're at no point in time other than in between these two lines of code should teacher be broken too. So if this doesn't work for some random occurrence, yes, I am teacher Mr. False and there is a Mr. T. You should call him Mr. True as a joke. Please don't do that, though. Make sure he's okay with that before you do. Call Mr. T, Mr. True. But you're more than welcome to call me Mr. Faults. I think that's funny. But anyways, once that's done, it should have a value of Mr. F or Mr. T. So I put in a error-catching mechanism by having this be a value of broken 2. Then again, I do this again down here where I'm setting up a primitive variable type of type imp, naming it Pokemon, and then creating values from 1 to 6. I then split this up into three different sections so that I have 33% each. I create two booleans this time. One I'm going to do get 50%. Get 50%. Which these two things actually do the same thing. You didn't know. And then I'm creating a whole bunch of strings and I'm changing two variables. And the nice thing about this output is I make it a lot easier. Because I only have one number per case and six outputs, one, two, three, four, five, six, 
what I can do is I can create a random variable with those six results because they're equal percentages and then just say for all the cases four to six, all the cases four or five, if it's five, otherwise it's four, otherwise it's six. And I'm doing a type of complex string output with two variables where I'm outputting two variables together instead of outputting a variable and a string. Because Mr. Fenson's tentacruel. And again, I'm doing the same exact thing. Here I'm using an else if to change the variable all hail the empire to three different options just because it's easier than doing a nested if. And here I'm doing an else if to set up the output. So I'm saying if it's less than 160, I'll put this. If it's less than 180, which means only 20% of the time, so right up here, sorry, 10% of the time because I multiplied by 2, I'll put this. 5% of the time, I'll put this. And the last percent, I'll put this, which I think is just 10%. And we keep on doing this over and over and over again with a whole bunch of code. And you can look through that code if you want to. But this is the only code that's actually different. What we have here is less than, less than or equal to, greater than and greater than or equal to. Please realize if you don't know these, go back to sixth grade. That's when you learn them and you should know them. They were even on the state mandated test. And then the new stuff here is this exclamation mark, go big or go home. What we have here is we're negating the value of I is good English. So if I is good English is true, this makes it f this value false, but it doesn't make I is good English false because I is good English is still true. We're turning this into false, just like we made this true or false. We could also use this not symbol for one of these values saying X is greater than 3 returns a true false value, and then we're going to negate that true false value. However, we could just do this using De Morgan's laws, which means greater than turns into less than or equal to. Because if I were to say everyone who's greater than 3 foot stand up, I could also say everyone who is, sorry, everyone who is not greater than 3 foot stand up. I could also say who is less than or equal to three foot, please stand up. I'll be talking to the same people. There is also equals equals. Now please realize equals equals only works for primitive variable types. It does not work for string because string points to the memory location that holds this value. So if I say, does the memory location equal the string? It doesn't work. That's why string has the equals method, which operates on the string my string, which says, does my string have the equivalent value of stop clicking, which this does work. This would be true. So this whole thing would then become a value of true. Not equals is the same as not of the value equals equals. It's just a lazy way to write it. There's also the and function, which is the two and signs. Basically, if there's a false, it's false. And then the opposite, there's the or function that we're sorry, the or Boolean expression, where it's two vertical lines, where it is, I don't know if you can see this, yes you can, it is this key right here below the backspace above the enter key, you hold shift and click that twice, and you get those two vertical lines, and what or is, if any of them are true, it's true. I'm either a genius or I'm named Mr. Fenson. That is obviously true because I'm named Mr. Fenson. Therefore, I may or may not be a genius. It doesn't matter. The statement, though, is still true. So then we just have some basic if statements, which I want to just go through real quick. Please realize the standard if statement does not need an else. It does need a statement in it, though. You can either put it on the next line tabbed in or at the end. Most people program this way. Very few people program this way. You can also do multiple statements inside the if statement by using the squirrely brackets. With the squirrely brackets, if you click to the right of them, it shows you where it matches at the end. And also, if you click to the right of the ending one, it also shows you where it starts. Please realize this true could be any Boolean expression. It could be x less than 5 or greater than 5 or even x less than y as long as x and y are declared. You also have an if else, which means if this is true, do this. Otherwise, if this is false, do this. 
But you can use the squirrely brackets with these if else's as well on the if side or the else side. You can use the methods that I gave you to do this. So this would be 50% of the time. This would be the other half of, it would be half of 50% would happen here, and the other half would happen here. That might actually be useful, just to let you know. I'm not going to tell you where, just use your brain. Then you can also, with an else if statement, which I just showed you, you can daisy chain the else if statement. So it goes, if this is true, otherwise 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 if this is true, and keep on going till your heart's content, and then finally end it with an else. But the funny thing is, you don't even need an else, but I would recommend it, because then all cases are handled, even if you don't do anything. This actually is the placeholder to not do anything. It's just a semicolon. Then we get into this movie template stuff, which I'm going to go through real quick. So these are the numbers that we are trying to create a random, I mean, uh, occurrence for. They sum up to 522. So my random value is going to be 522 plus 1. So this whole random value is from 1 to 522. Otherwise, if I just had this, it would be from 0 to 521, which just confuses the human brain. So what I need to do was do the first nine values are showing up here. So if it's less than 9, do this. Otherwise, if it's not less than 9, I'm doing less than 41, because 9 plus 32 is 41, the first 41 numbers. If it's not the first 9, it's the next 32 numbers, which I also made a little paint, which hopefully it's this one. Yes. So the first 9 numbers in the standard number line are from 0 to 9. The next 32 numbers are the numbers that are equal to or less than 41. The next 17 numbers, to get the next number, I would take 41, add 17, and get 58. If you look here, that's how I got the 58 was I went 41 plus 17 is 58. And then 46 plus 58 is 104. And then 18 plus 104 is 122. And I don't need to do the rest of the numbers because the rest of the numbers are just handled in the else. So let's do one ourselves. We're going to take these this if statement and I'm going to go to random.org to save time. Sure, let's generate 100. I want the first six values, so I'm going to copy this. So my random values that I'm going to be working with today are these. So the first thing I need to do is sum them all up. So I have 600 plus 9 plus 819 plus 583 plus 405 plus 218. And I get 2634. So over here I go equals 2634. And now I know my x is going to be a typecasted into a random number times 2634. And we add 1, so that's 1 to 2634. Now, what I need to do is I'm going to actually do it in this order. You can sort these numbers if you want to, but there's no benefit. Because just by sorting, it just means they're sorted this way. It just makes it look nice. But we don't need to make it look nice. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to do x less than or equal to 9, oh sorry, 600. This is going to output my values of the 600. So I'm going to copy this x less than to every if statement just to save me time. And I'm also going to output the values here. So I'm going in this order. So we're all on the same page. So I go 600 plus 9 is 609. 609 plus 819 is... 8 carry the 1, 2, 4, 1, 1,428. Get my math skills going in computer math class. Oh, yeah, go big or go home. Then I go 1, 4, 2, 8 plus 5, 8, 3 is 1 carry the 1, 2 carry the 1, 4 plus 5 is 9 carry the 1, 0, 2001. 1. Then I gotta go this plus this equals. 2, 4, 1, 6. And I don't need to do the last one because it just takes care of the rest of the numbers, but I can check my work. If I add 218 to this number, I should get this number, which I do because I'm pro. Go big or go home. Obviously, else ifs are the easiest one to do because this is a straight line. That's why you can only do three of them. You have to do three each. 3, 6, 9 is nine total outputs, which you have to do. So the next one that we have to do is the nested if 
or the double nested if, depending on your viewpoint. So take a look at this code. So we're trying to output these four numbers. The order does not matter. But this 418 comes from 400 plus 18, the first two options. So the first two options are here. The other two options are down here. Go big or go home. That's why I picked the bigger number up here. You can put either one of the numbers, and you can also combine these any way you want to. It just changes the order. But with percentages, it doesn't matter because if I roll a d6, I don't know what's the first x percent to get one shown up. If one is the last one in the list or the first one in the list, it doesn't matter because they're all equal percentages of happening. So once I say 418, inside this 418, the first 400 are going to be right here. Otherwise, if it's not in the first 400, it's in the next 18, so that's how I get my 18 there. Then I take 418 and add it to one of these numbers and get one of those numbers, depending on which one I do. That If it's true, I output this number. Otherwise, I output the other number. So I'm going to copy the code from the start double nested if. So I need four random values. So I'm going to go over here and get the next four values. So first thing I need to do is sum these up. So 875 plus 289 plus 815 plus 556. Is 2535 copy paste. I'm going to split these up just right here, the first two and the last two. So, because I'm lazy, let's just go straight with the calculator. 875 plus 289 is 1164. So, if x is less than 164, I also forgot to set up the random number. So, I'm going to go x equals random of times. 2535 plus 1. So the first set of numbers is right here, and then the next one, please realize all you have to do is replace all the trues with x less than or equal to. I'm just going to copy the a75 right here, and that means I have a75 here, and then I have 289 here, because if it's not in the first 875 numbers, then it's in the next 289. And then I take this number and add it to this number using the calculator because I'm lazy. I just go plus 815 and I get 1979 so I paste that right in there which means this is 815 and the last output would be 556 and it's quite easy to do now you only have one of the four outputs so what you need to realize is we gotta go back down to here and we wanna do a six output one to get a six output one I'm gonna take the double nested if code scroll up to where I was at and paste it in I'm going to copy this code to all my trues. I'm also going to copy my random code down here just because I'm lazy. And I want to take, let's do seven numbers just because. Five, seven. Ooh, let's go just go right here. I don't know if I use those numbers. So I need to sum up these seven numbers, which is going to be really fun. 570 plus 257 plus 439 plus 599 plus 719 plus 524 plus 349. Now please realize I'm really using really big numbers just to show you that the number size actually doesn't matter. There's no increased difficulty. I was nice and made all your numbers sum up to 100 so you could visually see it. Okay, so I have my sum and I have my plus one. So now what I need to do is split this up. Now we have seven numbers and we only have four spots. Now this is an issue. The one hard thing about the Madlibs program here is we need to increase the amount of inputs we have here. We only have four. I want to increase them, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste an if statement. I'm going to highlight one of the semicolons, I'm going to paste onto it, and then I have to tab in correctly, which is just like that. And the next one you have to do is you have to say, well, this if statement says do one of these two, so you have to set up squirrely brackets so it actually works to tab in like this that matches where this if is lined up I pressed shift tab now I did it here I'm not gonna do it here but I also have to do it down here so what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna copy this code I you would should do this and just go right there and paste that's the easiest way to do it the harder way to do it is to actually just take the if else from down here which I'm gonna do again we're gonna take this if else scroll up and I'm going to highlight the semicolon and paste. Now please realize this is not tabbed correctly, but these aren't. I have to tab these all in once. So I highlight all three and press tab. And then I have to set up the squirrely brackets because this else statement says do both of these, not just the one. 
and I shift tab this so this lines up with the else. And yes, tabbing matters, you will be graded on it. So now that I have one, two, three, and one, two, three, four outputs, we have to split these outputs into three and four. So I have the first three and the last four. So I'm going to split them right here because that's the obvious way to do it. So now I'm going to sum these first three numbers up. And that was the hard part, by the way. You can stop listening if you want to now. 570 plus 257 plus 439. And I get 1266. So I'm going to say this number equals 1266. And the 1266 goes here. I split this up to the three numbers right here. Now I have to split it up so that this if statement goes for two outputs, otherwise it's one output, so I have to combine these two, where the order doesn't matter, but I'm just going to do the first two just to keep the pattern going. So I have the first two numbers and the last number. I'm going to quickly go to my calculator and go 570 plus 257 equals 827, which means the first 827 numbers are these two numbers. Then I'm going to say is the first 570 numbers is 570. Otherwise, if it's not the first 570, but it's still in the first 827, aka inside here, it's going to be 257. Now that may be confusing, and that's why we're going to open up Paint. Because inside Paint, I can show you the number line, start at 0, and technically we end at whatever the max number is, 2535. And no, this is not drawn to scale. The first three numbers, so I'm going to say three numbers, are in 1266. The order that I'm outputting them in are in 570, 257, and 439. I grouped these two together, and their sum within the number line, if you just add them up, is 827. The sum of all three is the 1266. So that means if it's in the first two outputs, it's under 827. Then I'm saying if it's in the first 570, that's why I put less than 570. Now, if this is not the case, then I'm going to just output 439. If it's not less than 827, that means it's between 827 and 1266, which if you subtract them, you get 439. Now what we have to do, you want to keep, keep an eye on this number line is, the next number is 599. So I'm going to put 599 here. And I need to figure out also the next four numbers as well. So 524 and 349. Now I know this adds up to 2535, but that doesn't help me because what I need to know is this if statement. Now please realize this if statement says split this the numbers up into two. So I'm taking these four numbers up here, these four numbers up here and splitting them. Notice how I split two and two because we have two outputs and two outputs inside this if statement has two, inside this else has two. So that means I need the sum of these two numbers and the total of this because if we look at our number line we want this plus these to get this. And this is the number that goes right here. So we go to our trusted calculator. So we go 1266, which is the number right here, plus my sum of the two numbers, 599 and 719. So plus 599 plus 719, and I get 2584. I copy this value and go right there. And it also shows up in our number line, which I'm too lazy to type, 2584. Now within this 2584, I got to distinguish which numbers to go here. So if I want 599 to go here, which is completely up to my own opinion, I could s rearrange this. I need to go back to this 1266 and add 599 and get this total right here. So go back to my trusted calculator and say 1266 plus 599 is 1865. And so 1865 actually goes, what, her? because it is the sum of here, this spot is 1265, because I add these two together, and I get that to become 1865. So we have these numbers set up. Now we got to get this statement right down here, which means if I'm not in 2584, which I go back here, that means I'm in the next number here. So what I need to do is I need to take 524 and add it to 
2584, and then I get this number right here, which of course, trusty calculator, 2584 plus 524 gives me 3108. So my 3108 goes right here, and that means I have the next number is 524. And my last number, if you check it, should add up 349 to my total 3457 if you add it to 3108 which it does. So now we have a seven output one. If you can do a seven output double nested if, you could also do a six and a five, as well as a four. And this leads up to our most famous triple nested if. This is another example of a six output double nested if. So here is our triple nested if. Notice we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight outputs. Here are our numbers. Realize we split in four and four, and then two and two, and two and two, two and two, and two and two. We sum up the, ooh, actually, on a side note, I'm not gonna go over this one. For people who like to go big and use the greater sign, it is way hard. Please realize I said greater than 229, which does not represent these numbers. It actually represents these numbers, which confuses everyone to wazoo, so I'm not gonna go over that one. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get the triple nested if, and look, I commented it out so you can just copy it. So I'm gonna paste it right here. So we have our triple nested if. So we're gonna do eight more numbers from the random generator. So we have four and four make eight. So I'm going to use these numbers right here. Now realize the first thing I want to do is split the numbers in half. I want to get the total sum and the half sum. So I'm going to get the half sum, then total sum. Just to save time, I'm going to do 2 and 1. So I'm going to go 978 plus 74 plus 401 plus 885, and I get 2338. So I'm going to say equals 2338. This number also goes here. And then I'm going to add up the other numbers. So add 912 plus 470 plus 81 plus 67. And I get the total, which is that. So I'm going to do equals that. And then I'm also going to do my x equals random times that plus 1. So now that I have the first four numbers in this category, so I can just go copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. If it's within these numbers, I also got to say it's within these numbers, so I got to add up those two. So 978 plus 74 equals 1052. So paste 1052 there, and then I'm going to just paste 978 here. I also know to paste 401 right there. But it's not 401, is it? Because it's the next 401 numbers after 1052, because if it was less than 1052, it would be up here. So I go 1052 plus 401, and I get the 1453. So sorry, Star Wars fans, we're not using 401st represent. So we have 1453, which represents 401. And if it's not within 1453, but it's still less than 233.8, that's how we get the 885. So now we have to go down here. Now please realize that we already showed that we have our first numbers are the first 2338. So if we want to go the next two numbers, we have to add them to 2338. So what that means is we take these two numbers and we go 912 plus 470, we get 1382. So we want the next 1382 numbers after 2338. So we add 2338 and we get the magic number which I add all the numbers after 2338, but I want the next 1,000 some odd numbers. And then what I want to also say is 2338 plus 912 is 3250, which means the next 900, if I look at the numbers, the next 912 numbers gets me that number right there, which is the 3250. If I add in 470, that means the next two sets is the 3720. So that means this is 917, 912, this is 470, and that means this should be 8167. So that means after these numbers, if it's not less than this, it's the next 81 numbers after this, so it's 3801.
because 3720 plus 81 is that. And there is the triple nested if, which means I did all three types of ifs. Please realize you have a whole bunch of extra code here that goes through all different sets of situations, which you can read through and understand. I'm also going to be posting the pictures of all the graph representations of these so you can follow through. You have a whole bunch of code here. You also have all these to look at too. If you're lazy and want to just use methods, you're more than welcome to do this. For the percentages, it might be easier, it might be harder. That's up to you. But again, you have all the code you need and all with over 1,000 lines. And apparently I have 995 paragraphs. Good job, word fail. But yes, you have over a thousand lines of code to be looking at. I wouldn't recommend reading through every line, but I would recommend skimming through. Once you understand one type of if, you should understand the other ones. But learn one type, like a double nested, then go to the triple nested. But start with the else ifs, because these are the easiest. That's just my advice. Good luck. Make sure that you have it so that the vertical order is correct, where the 33% for all three is on top, and this one's on the bottom. This order here does not matter, because I won't be able to see it. Well, I will be able to see if I look at the code. But you can do 3, 4, 2, 5, 1, 6, 7, 72 if you want to in your if statements. It does not matter to me. But anyways, good luck. Wish you the best. And have a good one. I will see you later.